Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Nashville Tour Stop Podcast. My name is Aaron, and across the table from me today, longtime friend of the show, yes, Mr. Sir. Liam Slater. Good to be here. Welcome to the Nashville Tour Stop Pod, bud. Thank you so much. This is so fun. You have a great space here. I, the listeners at home, they're missing out by not being it is a It is a cozy room. It gets warm in here very quickly. It, but that's good because it's cold out. It's you know? freezing. <laughs> we were talking about that when you walked in. You had yeah. on a big puffy coat. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have my puffy coat uh, broken out at home. And I'm just waiting. I saw the uh, the weather for Christmas week here uh-huh. in Nashville is supposed to be like four degrees. Ugh. You know, my favorite part about the wintertime here in Nashville is that if it snows, everything shuts down. Yep. It, you get an adult snow day. I think we're like one of the few cities that does that. <laughs> I know? saw a meme on Facebook the other day about that because uh, it's it was talking about how millennials, like kids our age, yeah. we got out of school at the right time because we had snow days. Right. And then 2020, for better or for worse introduced virtual right? learning they can't do snow so days. these kids are just like oh we can't go to school guess i have to listen to a lecture on zoom <laughs> right, exactly yeah. no i mean snow days were just as good for the teachers yeah because teachers mean, didn't really. want to go to work we didn't want to school go to school yeah and i understand now why everyone hated being there all the time because right. no one wanted to be there yeah exactly i and you know when i'm I, so i'm originally from minnesota and Snow days were very uncommon because, because you guys get so much. Yeah, snow, exactly. you're used like, to it. Unless like literally the buses wouldn't start because it was so freezing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so coming down here, my, my first experience where it was like, oh, we're expecting like half an inch of snow. And, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, that sounds great. Like whatever, who cares? And I remember I was working at the time and they were like, no, you have to leave. Because there's going to be a half an inch of snow. We are shutting the store down. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> that happened to me when I first moved here. I was working on 12 South. Uh, but what happened is I worked these crazy hours at a bakery. So I was going to work at like 4 a.m. Yeah. And there's always that like witching hour in the middle of the night where mm-hmm. the snowstorms like now it gets bad. Yeah. So I was at work and it hadn't started snowing yet. And I worked in a windowless kitchen mm-hmm. with one little peephole through the back door. Yeah. So uh, it was my like window into the outside world. So sure. every now and then I'd like peek out and it'd be like, oh, it's flurrying. <laughs> and then after my eight hour shift, the uh, kitchen was supposed to close and the storefront was supposed to open. Right. And I had made like 800 cupcakes or something. Sure. And my boss called me. She's like, hey, did you go home? And I was like, no, I just finished. I was getting ready to leave for yeah. the day. Yeah. Thinking that like, oh, yeah, my shift is over. Of course I'm going to go home. Yes. And she, she's she's like, yeah, so you should look outside. Yeah. <laughs> and there was like an inch and a half or two inches of snow. And she told me to throw away all of the cupcakes. No way. Yeah. Did you actually, or did you take some home? I took some home. I was going to say. I, w- I also <laughs> thought about, because I asked her, I was like, can we give these to the Salvation Army or anything? Like a, a homeless shelter? She goes, no. God, no. She told, she <laughs> told me you? no. So <laughs> I just, I took like 12 home for myself yeah. and just went home. And then yeah. I drove down to Antioch where I lived. And uh-huh. I lived at the bottom of a very big hill. And no I got way. stuck because my car wouldn't go up the hill because it was too snowy. Yeah. And, uh. That was the worst snow day in Nashville. It's like two inches. <laughs> You've been working overnight. You're tired. Yeah. You the, like, like, <laughs> so the last thing I wanted to do was just anything. Yeah. And then I get home and I couldn't even get home. So I had to hike up um, the hill to my apartment complex. Yeah. And it, ugh, yeah. Snow in Nashville. But anyway, it's the great. It's unprepared for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I just stock up and, you know. Yeah. I think the last big snowstorm we had here was, uh, I believe it was Valentine's Day of mm-hmm. 2020. 21 yeah. maybe so yeah. last year last year but i only remember it because valentine's day i had hosted a show at belcourt taps called singles rest only peace. yeah and r.i.p belcourt oh, taps. rest in peace but Pour we hosted a singles show like for single ladies and gentlemen uh-huh. and i was uninformed that turns out the only people that like going to singles events sure are dudes <laughs> <laughs> so I I would I I would have never put so that together. So at the end of the night, all of us just lonely single dudes are like, "Well, just like every other day, going <laughs> home alone." And then it starts to snow, and then I get home, and overnight I start getting like really sick, and I had mm-hmm. a fever, and I woke up the next morning, mm-hmm. and we got a huge snowstorm, and I couldn't drive to an urgent care. I had a fever of a hundred and five. Whoa, that's like. Let's go to the ER. Yeah, that's like you start losing brain cells. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I I told my roommate, I was like, something's wrong. If you find me unconscious, yeah. 
please dial 911. I'm going to take a shower. If I'm not out of the shower in 30 minutes. Yeah. Something is you wrong. You have permission. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm trying to die falling forward. So yeah, you don't my have to see anything. fever finally came down, but I was so worried because I was like, okay, one, I don't know if I want to trust myself to drive oh, yeah. in snow with a 105, 105 yeah, degree that's fever. That's what I was going to say. Because that's, that, that's brain damage. You start hallucinating, surely. I'm not a doctor, but that's... that's <laughs> this know. is not medical advice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this, snow in Nashville... Why did you come here from Minnesota to escape yeah, the snow? Yeah, well, it's it, for one, yeah. I mean, you know, I came down here because, you know, you got to do music. You know, Who'd have thunk? We all have that little curse, for better or for worse. <laughs> you, know, they, you, you know, you wake up, you can't stop doing it, you know? I tried for a long time to not do it. I did it in college. I was, you know, a musician. I would play these gigs in, you know, uh, the college town that I lived in. And um, after college, I sort of told myself that I was, like, uh, you know, being an idiot for pursuing music and, you know, it, this is just what you do. Like it's a hobby right. or whatever. So I, I got like a big boy job. The weird thing is my whole family was telling me to go do music the entire time. That's like I, opposite of my family. They <laughs> exactly. all told me to go get a big yeah. boy job. <laughs> so they were like, you know, just, they were like, you know, do what you want. You know, you're good at music. Just do that. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I got to get a real job. And, uh, I, I did, I got this, you know, health insurance. And yeah, exactly. Bullshit. Optical, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I got this, you know, a big job and, um, I, you know, I hated it. You ended it. up hating it. I hated it. I hated it. I had like, a, it was never what you were supposed no, to do. I had this breakdown. That's like mental breakdown driving North on I-94 between Chicago and Milwaukee. Uh, I worked between the two cities and, uh, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I gotta leave. And, uh, I packed all my bags up. I told my girlfriend at the time I was leaving and I, I packed all my bags up. And Woof. I left. You just had, you had that moment out of a movie where you're just like, I'm out of here. Yeah, I just gotta go. I left a month later. You know, I, wow. I I knew that I was leaving. I knew that I that I needed to do something else for a long time. So I saved. I started saving up a bunch of my money from all my paychecks, mm -hmm. and then I I left. I moved down here, and then yeah, man. Rest so of that would have been 2018. You moved here. I, I actually think I've only been here for three years. I don't know why. 2019. It would have been tw so it was 2019, and then and then COVID hit in 2020. Um, that and, was 14 years ago, Liam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was one whole life ago. <laughs> one whole lifetime ago. <laughs> and then, yeah, I had all of this money saved up and I burned through it. And um, yep. I like I, I couldn't get a job, you know, because of COVID and everything. And um, I went like flat broke. I had to change apartments. I was going to leave. And my landlord said, you know, don't move. I have a place that's cheaper for you and move me into a cheaper apartment. And then... Um, uh, in November of 2020 or something like that. I can't remember. I think it was in December of 2020. I met my now manager and sort of everything kind of helped out from there. Yeah. So it's good having people like that who can kind of re refocus you, recenter yeah. you because we were talking off mic before we started about how, how brutal it has been mm -hmm. in Nashville lately. Yeah. And it's good to have people that can remind you that even if it sucks sometimes, yeah, we do get to do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I went, you know, we were talking about TikTok before the show started and I went live on TikTok yesterday and it was another moment that reminded me of why we do it because this person got on and she was requesting my music and it's cool. yeah, it's like, it's, you know, it, that is one of the reasons why you do it. And, you know, I texted my manager afterwards. I was like, this is insane. She actually knows my music. And she's a, she is a legitimate fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like I heard about you. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yes, I've heard the lore exactly. of your existence. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's crazy. You know, it's it's a bizarre thing. You know, I I have those moments every now and then where like doing shows, I start to it all it all starts to kind of bleed together. Mm -hmm. But every now and then you'll you'll see one person on stage or like one person in the audience. And then it really can save you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it yeah. can save you because uh, earlier this year, so we're recording this at the very end of 2022. Mm -hmm. And earlier this year, I almost canceled all of the tour stop events. I was just, yeah. I was just at the end of my rope. I yeah. just, I was like, what's the point? Right. And yeah. then I had that moment where it, it turned back around. Thank God. Yeah, but honestly. This it's it's been brutal because everything is changing right now. Yeah, it's very the, in flux. The 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 atmosphere of Nashville, the industry, the 
the business, mm -hmm. the the music people like is, I mean, everything's constantly changing, but mm -hmm. there's been a, some really rapid change happening in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good that those little things can still save, yeah. Yeah. save the baby, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to be reminded of like why you do things, right. you know, and like to see progress is also like mm -hmm. another insane, you know, like thing, like you're working for this intangible thing you know you're you're working for you know peep for listeners you know you know people. for the hope that one day someone yeah, will exactly care. and then you know you sort of start to get it and it becomes tangible and it's you know very i think cool. that that moment that kind of saved it was when we did our second show at the listening room and mm -hmm. we sold out and it was a uh, great show yes the listening room does sell out quite often i will give that it has a huge yeah. built-in audience but i've also been to shows there that have been quite poorly attended so yeah. i know that it's not just a given yeah it's it's in large part because of the people who are on stage yeah and you can put a monkey behind a corvette but that doesn't mean that it's gonna right go well on the highway right <laughs> but you can put good people into the, uh, the right place and right. then magic happens right exactly so i walked on stage and you just you see the excitement in that audience's yeah. eyes and it restores your faith in humanity yep. that not everyone only wants to be on their phone all the time. Right. <laughs> right. Some people still really want to be in front of an audience. Right, right. Some exactly. people still want to be in front of a show. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've talked a lot and we skipped over the question I usually start with. Okay, yeah. Do you remember how you and I met Mr. Liam Slater? It well, it had to be it it had to be a Sunday night at Belcourt Taps. Belcourt uh, Taps RIP. RIP. That's the second time. <laughs> um, it had to be then. It had to be in 20, 2019. I know it, it was it would have probably been right after you moved here. Yeah, it, shortly I think after it was you moved here. it must have been in September or October of 2019. I have a I keep uh, a collection of all of the shows that I ever play. Really? Yeah. Um and um, so it had to have been in October of 2019 or something like that. Because I remember the first time I went to Belcourt Taps was in September of 2018 or 2019. Okay. So I, I have a, a card from the first time I went to Belcourt Taps, rest in peace. Was it my card? No, no. They're like Ooh, these little. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was playing the. I think the first time I went there, I played the East of the Rose show. The East of the Rose show. Uh, Another no. one. That's uh that is that is now I guess gone. Yeah, deceased. It's been long since yeah. gone. Yeah, I think it stopped after COVID. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, you know, after lockdown, I think that stopped. Uh but yeah, I played that, I think it was on a Monday night. And then everyone was like, You gotta come back for a Sunday night show. And to be fair, Sunday nights at Belcourt were where it was at. That was a special time. That was where those were the good old days, you know. I really hate admitting that like that's so a song that I wrote and a quote that I love dearly is from The Office. Mm -hmm. You ever watch The Office? I, I, I've watched so every the finale season. of the show. Andy Bernard is mm -hmm. talking about the whole show, and mm -hmm. he's like, "Why can't you know you're in the good old days before you've left them?" Yeah, yeah. And I wrote a song about that years yeah. ago, but I was rewatching that, and you saying it now just brings it all right back to be like, yeah. "Oh man, I wish that I." Had realized how important that yeah. was when it was happening <laughs> it was cool i mean you could go down there i mean that was back when you know we all had money still i mean i i did, <laughs> I did at least you know like I, you know i have money and you would get you know the seven dollar beer and shot combo and you would just sit there and you listen to all your friends it was a great time you know yep. and that was that was you know that was nashville it was before the hangovers started hurting worse in the morning yeah i don't know how but literally after lockdown like i get sleepier now and mm -hmm. i get like you know when when like nine o'clock rolls around my body's like hey it's yep. time to go to sleep. And also, like, my, every time I, like, drink heavily, my body's like, all right, dude, we're done for the whole day. We're done for the rest <laughs> of the day. Yeah. Uh, when I was home for Thanksgiving, I had one of those days where, like, I, I didn't intend on just drink right. the whole time. Right. But I only get to see my friends in my hometown people maybe once a year yeah and it just lined up that the only day everyone was available mm -hmm. was the same day <laughs> so i just so went just got it all done one place to <laughs> one place i think i went to six bars <laughs> and i f forgot to eat dinner and then oh no it, it, that is a cardinal sin Yes. It, 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 oh, it, it was not my best moment back home because I remember I bought a ticket to watch a DJ, mm -hmm. which also, who buys a ticket to watch a DJ in Columbia, Missouri? <laughs> and uh, what I learned is, as it turns out, yeah. no one. 
<laughs> I walked in. I walked into this club. It's the day after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and I pay ten bucks to go in, and it's empty. <laughs> Just me, the bartender, and the DJ. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is the fifth bar I've been to, and where do I go? <laughs> no one here. So I sat and just drank a PBR at the bar, and then I got sick, and I went threw up into a urinal, and then I was like, well, if if the bar is busy, <laughs> yeah. you can get away with that. Wasn't me? Yeah, exactly. When you're the only guy at the bar, pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. So. <laughs> I just put my beard down. I was like, hey, I'm going to go. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> you tipped him extra. Yeah, he just like, walked away. I was like, sorry, your night's about to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was uh, driving back home to Nashville here the day after that. Mm-hmm. And I've never had to do a full body hangover yeah. in the car for eight hours. Yeah. And it was just not Times are changing. Times Times they are a change. My body, it is a change. Yeah, it is a change. Yeah, yeah, this is is the new episode of Our Changing Bodies with Aaron and Liam. We need need that book that you get, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Liam, what what was it originally when you were a kid that made you want to get involved in music? I've always done two things in my life. I always uh, played sports and I always uh, did music. And I started playing guitar when i was like 12 or 11 and um i just you know i loved it you know i love playing guitar i always played baseball um and i told myself that after my athletic career was done i would do um i would do Do music music. yeah and um i started listening to country music probably when i was like 13 or 14 um um my girlfriend my high school girlfriend showed me neon moon by brooks and dunn what a Great first base. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and that sort of just started it. And I uh, I think I was it maybe wasn't high school, but it was something around there. I, I was thirteen, and I was like, oh, I love country music. I want to do country music. Yep. And um, I got recruited to play baseball, and I did that. And uh, what position did you play? I was a first baseman. You were first baseman. Yeah. And then I was a left fielder. There you go. Yeah. Um. And so I I did that, and it just wasn't going well, and. Uh, my mother passed away when I was 20 and I was just like, you know what? Like this, this is just not for me. I'm just, I'm going to focus on myself. And then I wrote a couple songs at the time about my mom passing away and about my ex-girlfriend. My, right. You know, and, um, so was that when you first started writing around that age? Yeah. I had written songs in high school, but they were like shitty. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> I, I, I say that with all of the, all of the love. Yeah. <laughs> my high school songs were shitty yeah. also. <laughs> And like the first time I wrote in college, they were, they were still shitty. Don't get me wrong, but they were like, they were like, Oh, these have some like merit to them, you know, Mm -hmm. and you could do these ones, you know, and you're not totally embarrassed to play them for people. Exactly. And so, um, I was doing the, the, I I went to school in Appleton, Wisconsin, which is this, like, there's like 70,000 people that live there and they're all just like right on the college strip. Um, and so I was doing like bars around there. I was playing, you know, on campus, off campus. And it was going fine, but it was enough for me to really get the bug of like, I love performing. I love playing in front of people. I am going to completely do this for the rest of my life. That's cool. Yeah. Was there was there a moment that made you decide Nashville or was it the the neon moon? No, there was. I came to Nashville. My my girlfriend at the time and I, so when I graduated college, I moved to Chicago with my then girlfriend. Okay. And she brought me down here to Nashville, was like, I think you'll really like Nashville. She had been here once before and she was like, I think you'll really like it. And I could not get enough of it. It felt the first time I moved or I came to Nashville, it felt like I tell people all the time that I was a zebra always running with horses. Mm-hmm. And the first time that I came to Nashville, I was like, oh my God, there's other zebras. zebras. This is incredible. <laughs> and uh, and so, yeah, after that, I knew. Other it. people who like having beer at 1 p.m. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> look at, there's other degenerate depressed people. This is, <laughs> this is unbelievable. Oh you know? my gosh. No no wonder everyone's happy everywhere else. Yeah. All the sad people are here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I remember I was sitting at um, a Drifter's Bar out in East. Drifter's I was one of closed. my favorites. I love Drifter's. And I, I was like, it's incredible that that i can just sit here and have like a 
five dollar beer. And didn't they do two for ones? They did two for ones during happy hour, and they had like great barbecue. Great barbecue. And then they had a band playing, and they, they played outside. And it was like warm weather. I was like, this place is paradise. Like and what? Literally, what else could I ask for? There's no. It was like everything I want to do is right here. I love barbecue. I love beer, and I love music. And these people are good. You know, good music. There's like it's the best I've ever heard, and they are not even the best in Nashville. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and I, I just couldn't get enough of it. And then the 2020. Tornado yeah. ruined it. And then, yeah, locked, yeah, shut down all of that stuff. It's, now it's... Drifters is reopened now, but it's different. Oh, they, is it open? It, they reopened. It's, it's, they have limited hours and limited days now. Oh, okay. But the uh, the menus changed sure. and the vibe's different. I go over there pretty frequently because I, I live near Five Points. So I mm-hmm. go over to Three Crow or I go over to um, Up Down a bit if I'm like really looking to I party. enjoy Up Down. I, I went up there down. for the first time by myself. Yeah. See, I don't have a problem going to bars by I myself. I love it, yeah. But going to a bar and sitting at a bar mm-hmm. where there's a TV and you can just mm-hmm. sit and quietly mm-hmm. drink your beer is one thing. Yeah. But it was weird going to Uptown and being like, hi, can I get $15 in tokens? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then just go play. Yeah, Mario. Mario, yeah. <laughs> Donkey yeah, Kong. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to play Need for Speed for well, 30 minutes. What's great is that's like, it's the it was the first time when I walked in there, I was like, holy shit, this is... Like they have designed a bar around just the things that my generation likes to do. The things you know? that our generation got our asses kicked yeah. for be, for enjoying when we were little. Yeah, I was like, wait, I'm their demographic, and I like this. Yeah, this is what I want to do. I do want to get drunk and play Mario Kart. Or, that's you why know. I like. Yeah, that's what I do at home. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I like bars like Up Down and Pins Mechanical. Yeah, because they've also got. They got pinball. They've yep. got uh, what is it? Duck pin bowling. Yeah, is that yeah, what it's yeah. Called? yeah. Then they've also got the video game room. Yeah, I went and, for my birthday. I went and played Mega Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I yeah. played Mega yeah. Man for my birthday. Yeah, that sounds fun. You know, it was, it's it's testament to millennials starting to own bars. Is yeah, because. We're like, what are the things that we miss? Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's like, yes. oh, bomb pops. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's put that into it. Let's put that into <laughs> yeah, a drink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, sour straws. Yeah. Let's put those into it. Twizzler straws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Candy. That's all we're well, talking about. I love about. Up Down because it's like, oh, like we really just want to get like drunk for cheap and eat like pretty good pizza. And it's like you get a slice of pizza for like four dollars over there, and yep. drinks are nice. And then I spend way too much money in tokens over there, but it's it's great. I love it. There's. And it's active entertainment rather than yes. If if you're playing Soul Calibur, mm-hmm. you're not thinking about the demons that get you when you're <laughs> yeah, on your couch. Exactly. You're, you're not like yeah. I'm so alone. Yeah. What keeps you up at night? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like mm, I do want to put in two more tokens to play another round of Frogger. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Did you know Up Down is a chain? No kidding. Yeah. So I didn't know that it was a chain because uh, I originally went to Up Down in Kansas City. And then really? I thought that it was just this dope yeah. arcade bar in yeah. Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And I, my brother lives up there. So every time I was there, I was like, dude, let's go to Uptown. That place is sick. Play ski yeah. ball. Yeah. It's like a Dave and Buster's without the Dave. weird yeah. bros. <laughs> yeah. And then it, they opened it here and I was like, oh my God. All of the things I've ever wanted are here. Are here. And it's a great location too. It is a great location yeah. over there in East Nashville, right yeah. next door to the basement East, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're on uh, what is that woodland? Something like that. It's Something right across like from uh, they're they're right next to that bar, Lakeside Lounge. Lakeside been? Lounge. I've you never know? been there. It's it it is. Have you ever been to Mickey's? Yes. It's Mickey's, but diff- It's like Mickey's, but like if it was the Salty Spittoon from SpongeBob. Oh, okay. It's like that. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like a like a really like not a, not a beach bar, but like a lake bar. No, it's more like it's more gruff. You know, okay. You're like, you know, the like. I walk in there and I'm like, I think I like. I don't look dirty enough to be in here. You I know, like, I, I don't. I think I need to wear a leather jacket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like these <laughs> people are mocking me because I like. I, I like. I look like fancy. You know, <laughs> like if I walk into Mickey's, they still mock me for looking fancy. But, you know, but it's different. You know, I was at Mickey's the other day and I started to realize I'm growing up mm-hmm. because I had gone to a show at the Bowery Vault mm-hmm. right behind. Yeah, sure. And the band was great. And then there were these girls that were there to see the band, and I was sitting talking to them, and of course, they're babes. Right. And they say, hey, thanks for being at this show. Yeah. Our friend was in the band. Do you want to come to Mickey's with us? And I was like, "Absolutely, hell yeah, I do. Yeah, of course. Absolutely, I want to come to Mickey's. Yeah. And we went to Mickey's, and I got a Shiner Bach. Nice. A nice, a nice Texas beer. Yeah. <laughs> and they ordered four lemon drop shots oh. each. 
Whoa. Whoa. Wait, four lemon drop shots each? They ordered 12 shots. Okay, first of all, my my wallet can't even afford that. Um, it was it was like a it was like a ninety dollar tab before tip. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and I rem- I reminded myself like, oh, this is why I don't hang out with twenty two year olds. <laughs> I was like, I remember going to bars and doing that. Yeah, but nowadays, like, I can't justify spending thirty seven dollars on lemon drop shots. Yeah. I have a yeah. hard enough time justifying spending nine dollars on yeah. whiskey. If I bu- if I spend thirty seven dollars at Kroger, I'm like, hey man, <laughs> what are we doing? Do you ever <laughs> thumb through the chicken packs to see which <laughs> yes, one is cheapest? Yes, yes, of course, duh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> it's like if like if one is eight dollars and seventy cents and another one is eight sixty five, I'm pick like, the yeah, absolutely. I'm like that fi- that nickel means a lot. That <laughs> that adds like, up. You know, if I do this once a week for you know yeah. fifty two weeks, I've got. <laughs> Two dollars yeah. and fifty cents, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like that app, uh, Dosh. Have you ever heard of that? I have heard of that. It's yeah. a cash back app, and it yeah. works at some places in mm-hmm. Nashville. But like, it's like we'll give you one percent cash back just for having our app. I'm like, yeah. Cool. Every time I go to Jets Pizza, I get yeah. eight cents. Yeah. <laughs> Neat. It's like that exactly. eight cents is really, yeah, really important to yeah, me. Yeah, I need that. You could probably find eight cents on the street. I know? literally saw a Outside. dime on the floor at the gym today and uh-huh. didn't pick it up. And I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> that dime could have gone a long way. And you never know. Two, what was it? 2002, you get 2001. Gotta... My school had this, the eighth graders at my school. So I went to a first through an eighth grade private mm-hmm. school. The eighth graders had what was called the candy cart cool. where they drive around every Friday before the last hour of school mm-hmm. and they'd sell candy. Okay. And that was back when candy, like a full size, like Snickers bar was yep. 60 cents. Wow. And how old are you? Almost, <laughs> almost, almost 40. <laughs> no, but dude, it was, it was crazy thinking like back then 10 cents would have gotten you some candy. Yeah, sure. And if you walk into any grocery store with a dime now and you're like, what can this get me? Yeah. They're like, it you can will get the get tip you- of a banana. Yes. We'll we'll let you stem the banana and just keep the stem part of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. Well, hey, let's take a quick break and we'll come right back with the Nashville Tour Stop Podcast. And we're back with the Nashville Tour Stop Podcast. We've got Liam Slater here Howdy. today. Liam, thanks for coming on Thank to the show, dude. Thank you for having dude. me. This is so fun. So most of our podcasts are pretty just bantery. Sure. We just pontificate. I do like to get some substance in because a lot of people are listening to hear me talk nonsense. Got it. Some people are listening because they actually want to hear us talk about music. Sure. So I I like to learn about other people's creative processes. Yeah. When you're writing... Mm-hmm. What what starts the process? And it, it could be literally any part of it. And I, I know for yeah. myself, it can be any aspect of a song that can spur the rest of it. But yeah. you have you have a, a method that works best for you. Um, I I always love starting with an idea. Obviously, you know that's like the old adage, like it, it starts with an idea or mm-hmm. whatever. You know, but I like having a hook that I can sort of game plan around. Um what I want the song to be. And then I try to find a melody that sort of fits the vibe of the hook that I'm going for, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then I kind of just let it do its thing. I I always like to have an idea of like, this is what I think the first verse would look like. This is what I think the the chorus would sound like or look like. And then um, kind of outline it so that I'm sort of writing with the That's purpose. much more close to my process than yeah. other people. Because I've, I know you've been in the rights. I know I have been in the rights where... You can you immediately feel mm-hmm. the vibe is not yeah not me- not meshing right and the other person just wants to start verse one yeah and I'm like I don't it's like I don't know where to go yeah exactly like if you don't have an if you don't have a thing that you're kind of like trying to point to mm-hmm. you know or uh, like a a uh, a thesis statement that you're arriving <laughs> exactly. at you know you don't really y- your song is directionless you know the, uh, there's an old Kent Dean quote from our episode i believe it was like three or four uh, mm-hmm. episodes back yeah but he said something along the lines of uh you could have the fastest ship in all of the seas mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter if you don't know where you're sailing yeah yeah and like that's exactly. the same deal yes a hundred percent it's like you could be the best songwriter but if you've got a co-writer that's just 
mm, this line's cool. What's yeah. next? I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't have the, if you don't have a a purpose, a purpose, it, it it the song will reflect that. You know. So do you ever have ideas that none you might and you probably mm-hmm. do where you have an idea mm-hmm. and you start to address it, you start trying to write it, yep. and then you don't feel either ready to write that idea yeah. or you have it and you're like, I have to save this for this person. Yeah. That I, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. I do um I do hold hooks for certain rights. Um, like if if I've been you know, if if I'm writing up, yeah, I'm using air quotes for the listeners. Um, where Just describe what that is? Um, it's for the people who might not know. It's where like, um, if you're writing above your level, like right. if, if someone who's more established, someone who has you know cuts or awards or something like that, or an artist that that is also you know they have you know x amount of streams or they're signed or something. If I have a right like that, I will definitely hold some ideas for that particular right because i want that right to go well because that has you want to put your best foot forward exactly exactly (laughs) and um you know uh, but that 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 isn't to say that i don't that i always do that um if i have chemistry with a writer um i will who are some of the people you like to write with right now i love my main co-writer right now is greg wilson um i write with him great dude yeah i love greg um i write with him about once a week um bill troy is another writer that i write with a a bunch i just started writing with another guy his name's taylor goyette i know taylor Um, yeah shout out taylor yeah we just wrote a great one that we went in studio his fiance's name is kelsey right i think they're married now they're married i think so good lord he had a ring on so Ooh, then yeah. I guess that's the thing. Yeah. They pro- they're married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we just wrote a good one. Um, yeah, um, those are my like main guys that I'm working with right now. Um, I do some writing over... Oh, I write with Kaylin Robinson over at cool. Peter Music a lot. Um, and I've been doing some writing at Curb too. Um, and I love all the people over there. So it's been great. You know, I, I am sort of between writing groups right now where like I have my, I I had a bunch of people that I was working with and now I've kind of started shifting my rights towards writing. Towards another. Yeah. And that goes back to the conversation I had with Lucas Carpenter about finding a community and it, Mm -hmm. and you can test a community to see Mm -hmm. if it's what you like. And if, if it doesn't mesh or if you start off liking it then you kind of go passive towards it, it's okay to to change. Yeah. Because I've had people who really loved to tour stop early on. And then they kind of started going and doing other things. And yeah. I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, like, absolutely. I appreciate you for being here. And I'm, I hope you find what you're looking for. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's okay to, to change directions. Yeah. There's like, there's a business side to the creativity where, absolutely. you know, it, it doesn't have to be this, like, you know, it's not like a breakup, you know, where, where you're exactly, there are, I have a bunch of people who I am really good friends with, but if, if I were to get in a room with them, it's just not effective. Right. You know, and it's not worth either of our times to sit there and write. There's be- plenty of people I would rather just be friends with. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Then yeah, yeah. I, I've had those people who've asked to have co writes and I yeah. honestly say, Can't we just can't yeah. we just have a beer? Right, exactly. Can we just <laughs> yeah. want to sit and hang out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good friends understand that. Yeah. And that's that's one reason why this town is so great, is because yes. We 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 have the people we work with and the yep. people we're creative with. Yep. And then we also have people who are just there to be our our friends. Yeah, exactly. And there's there's a hard line to draw there because if you start trying to force one mm-hmm. aspect of that onto another one, yep. it can sour a relationship. Yeah, and I I I myself have struggled with drawing a line between the two, and I'm getting better at it now. The more I do it, like the more I write songs, and the more I you know move forward in Nashville, the more I'm like, okay, I, I just don't have, I can't, you know, right. I would love to hang out with you after my rights, but I don't, I can't, right. You know, it's, it's not the, worth it. the separation of church and state. So to speak. exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> church being, you know, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk about your music, man. Yes. When, when did you first put out a single that, that was important to you? So, when, when, when was the first song that you wrote that actually meant something to you that was better than just these high school songs yeah the first one that i ever put out with uh, was a song called uh don't want to see you that has since been um taken down because we're we're releasing music next year uh in february okay and so we have we've stripped everything out all of your music's gone yeah there's nothing um and so the first one i did was a a song called don't want to see you and um that was the one that like got people saying like oh you're not bad you know right um 
And but the first time I ever sort of felt like a, an actual like songwriter, you know, mm-hmm. was uh, I wrote a song called Breaking Up Down um, here about a year ago. And when I wrote that song, um, I was like, this is a song where I'm actually saying something and and a song where, you know, uh, not only will like, you know, not only am I proud of myself, but other people I think want will want to hear the song, too. And um, that's the song that's really kind of, uh, you know, changed my life so far. Who did you write that with? I wrote it with Mia Mantia. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, that's that song genuinely has changed my life. My life is, you know, different now than it was uh, a year ago. Um, and it's gotten me into a lot of cool opportunities. And, you know, I, I hope I get to record the song. Um, we just did another demo for it on Friday. Um, but if I don't, I just want people to hear the song. You know, that's cool. Yeah. And having having the opportunity to go back and and re gosh, what is the word? Re re look at all of our old mm-hmm. material because yeah. I I've written plenty of songs here in Nashville that I'm quite proud of. But yeah. then it's fun to go back into your catalog yeah. and reassess the stuff that at one point might have been your favorite song. Yeah. And then you get to look back at it now and be yes. like, that was actually not bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I look at a, the song I was talking about earlier that I referenced with The Office is called Black and White. Mm-hmm. And that was the first song that I remember putting out where my, quote, fans, they were my friends back right. in my hometown. The f- first song I put out that people actually responded to. Right. Because it was the first time, like you said, the first time I said something that meant something. Right, exactly. And it's, it's weird when you see that shift happen. And yeah. now with hindsight you can go back and look at it and be like i don't know what i was feeling that day yeah exactly but something changed there yeah it's uh, the difference but but for me was um a lot of the songs that i was writing were sort of like nashville style where you just like write to a hook almost mm-hmm. like a, a a paper you know where you just like right. i'm writing this thing and when i wrote breaking up down it was like i'm not only just writing to the hook but i'm like my i am myself in this song mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you're not I, writing into a mad lib right yeah exactly yes exactly i am i am in this song i am writing this song and it has a hook that i'm writing to right. you know i think one of the first songs uh that i wrote that i kind of got out of that box of this is how you write a nashville yes, song yes. that i still really love and one that you know is called don't invite me to your wedding yeah 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 it is it is a really honest song where i put myself into a position where just like i was seeing all of my friends fall in love right and get in relationships right and get married and i was like just don't invite me to your fucking wedding <laughs> and and i look back at it now and back then it was a uh it was more of a like an angry idea right yes and then i forget which uh writer it was it might have been aaron right here yeah, you know sure. him i do yes amazing songwriter yes grammys but- <laughs> I was talking to him years ago about yeah. process and he was saying like if you're working with an artist mm-hmm. and before I get into this Aaron Retier is a Grammy award winning songwriter yeah. and he's gotten I think I think his Spotify rap said he had gotten like 250 million streams yeah, with his that, cuts. He wrote that the finale song in A Star Is Born. Yes. Yeah. And he just got a cut with Trace Adkins mm-hmm. uh Gosh, but he, he's he's just done so much stuff. Oh, yeah. He he knows Dave Grohl. That's so cool. Like, I, I was wearing a Foo Fighters t-shirt once, uh-huh. and he sat down on stage next to me, and he goes, oh, Foo Fighters, nice guys. But <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> he goes, no, I, I wrote a bunch of the songs on their Guitar Players album when he did it solo in Nashville. I was like, oh, God, I'm, un- I'm unqualified to be on a stage the next to you. Time, the first time I met Aaron Ratier, it was... um. He was at Belcourt Taps and yep. the owner introduced me. And that's how I met him. And it was because she was saying, This is a guy, he has a crisp or not a Christmas, a children's album coming yep, out. Yep, 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 is what it's called. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. And then he told me his name and I was like, Wait, why would you not say that you're the guy that wrote <laughs> all this other shit? Why because you... he's got he's got a song where he goes, exactly, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. You would never assume that a guy who wrote a song called "I Like Orange Oranges." Yeah, he has two Grammys. Yeah, <laughs> that's two that is them. that is the most unassuming thing, which is why I love this town. Is because that is it, you literally can just run into anybody and have no idea yes. that they're a mega songwriter yeah yeah i have gotten like there have been a bunch of times 
and it, this is probably not the greatest thing, but there have been a bunch of times where someone has like, we've been sitting at a bar and it was, it was at a show or something like that. And we've been talking. And then I like realize that they're like important. And I, and I just go like, yeah, I don't know who you are, man. Like, yep. you know, like, I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry that I don't know yeah. who you are. I'm glad that you're successful. Yeah, this is so, so cool. I can't wait to learn who you are. But, <laughs> so but this I is, don't know. What, <laughs> this is what, what I was uh, saying that I, I got distracted talking yeah. about Aaron. He's such a cool dude. But yeah. the advice he gave me, because mm -hmm. after I learned his credential, yep. I was like, hey, man, I'm here to do music. Yeah. And do you have any advice for somebody who's just trying to write better songs yeah and he in really really simple terms said okay if you're trying to co-write a song with an artist they aren't writing the song mm -hmm. you're writing the song yeah but you're not writing any of the words yeah you just ask them how they feel and then you just cherry pick and then you kind of puzzle piece it together yeah because I guess it's an artist thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to, you're not going to like anything anyone says more than you like something you Absolutely. say. Absolutely, yeah. So if you can figure out the things that that artist is saying, whether mm -hmm. or not it's subtext or actual words, mm -hmm. if you can write to what they're t saying and feeling, they're going to love it way more. Yeah. And I was just transcended. Yeah. Because he was just this dude who clearly had just smoked pot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know way more than I ever will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The the songwriting process is something that I love is different for everybody. Yeah, and that's the beauty it's, of it. It's cool getting to see people like Aaron Ratier and mm -hmm. all these other people, Priscilla Block, Alon Weintraub, just yeah, have it happen. Oh yeah, have yeah. it happen. The re the reason they're here. Yeah, and in real time, and we get to see our friends accomplishing things. Yeah, it's amazing to watch uh, our group kind of move up. I mean, we're still you know in you know we're a sophomore or junior level, but still it's you know some. And it's someday and not too not too far off. I think someone from our class is going to just out of nowhere, mm -hmm. so to speak, just mm -hmm. poof, yeah, just become the biggest person ever. Mm -hmm. And the best part about Nashville mm -hmm. is that person's going to say, "Hey, all my friends, yeah, come with me." Yeah, exactly. Yes. And that's uh, I was talking with Lucas Carpenter about mm -hmm. that because it's kind of like that with the music mafia with Big and Rich and Gretchen mm -hmm. Wilson. How yes. like as soon as one of them hit. All of the others Blew hit up. shortly thereafter yeah. because that's just how this town works. You're, I mean, you yeah. want to work with your friends. Yeah. And then all of a sudden your friends are successful because you just told the person who's the gatekeeper like, hey, listen to that guy. Yeah. And I think that the reason a lot of our friends right now aren't signed isn't mm -hmm. because of a lack of talent. Mm -hmm. It's just because whoever it is that's holding the key mm -hmm. just doesn't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. It's. That's that's why I think it's so important for people to just be present. Yeah. Just be out there. Yep. Be yep. out there. Be seen. And for better or for worse, if someone sees your name a bajillion times, eventually yep. they're going to say, who is that? Right. Exactly. It's yeah. Like, I see your name everywhere. There's this, a band called Multi Ultra. Okay. And I booked them on one of my shows at uh, Tin Roof mm -hmm. last, uh, last fall. Mm -hmm. Not because I saw them play live not because they submitted to play but because i see their stickers everywhere <laughs> and i was literally at a bar taking a bathroom break yep. wow i saved that one <laughs> i was having a bathroom break and i saw this multi ultra sticker and i was like well i'll just look them up on instagram and then it was like oh they're a cool rock band and then i yep. listened to the music i was like oh damn like they good. rock. Yeah. <laughs> so little things like that work. Yeah. Subtle, just presence. Yeah. That's yeah. One, that's one thing that I try to remind people is like, you can play as many boring little writer's rounds as you want. Yep. But eventually one of them might yeah. be a thing. Exactly. I mean, I talk about this a lot with my friends. You know, you like, you have to shoot to score, you know? Absolutely. And like, that does mean like you, you just. You're you going to miss a lot. Yeah. And you have to just do things like I, you know. TikTok is a entity that a lot of people it's you know it's controversial right. you know but it's another like Lauren Weintraub blew up on TikTok that's how she got her thing Priscilla Block did too yeah same thing you know all of these people are you know uh, I know a guy um, who didn't even do a music TikTok um, he did literally a, a video of his friend slapping his belly. <laughs> um, and it like it blew up and now he just got signed to Ernest's label. Wow. Yeah. That's 
that that's the power of of TikTok. Yeah. And why it's dangerous and amazing for our industry. Yeah, exactly. Is because it reaches people who would otherwise never see it. Yep. But it also enables people who might not, shall we say, deserve. Sure. Because there's there's plenty of amazing songwriters, and I don't want to cheapen somebody's ability mm-hmm. just because they get do a video is getting a right. belly slap. Right. But there's there's all these people who might not have, shall we say, luck. To, yeah. Because I think that's most of what TikTok is. It is luck. It's just luck. Yeah. I mean, I would love to be lucky. You know, if I if I if, <laughs> if there's a hook wants, for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if somebody wants to slap my belly and I blow up and I get signed to anything, <laughs> I would be, you know, <laughs> I'd be so happy. And I think that's kind of like the the reason why I do it at least is because it is sort of this like um thing that at any moment could change your life. And at the very least, I have a steady base that is growing on TikTok. Right. You know? Yeah, I track all of my Instagram following and it sometimes feels like, God, I have been sitting at 8,000 followers mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. But then if I go back and look at my spreadsheet, it's like, no, actually, like every month, it's growing. Like, just a little bit. Yeah. And that's, I have to always remind myself, it's just like, it's not a sprint, it's a right. marathon, like all the old cliches, yep. like it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because eventually you're going to, be there yeah and yeah. right now we were just talking about it like these are the good old days right we are in them now yes. we are being present <laughs> experiencing <laughs> yeah. this now this is exactly good, this is as good as it gets yeah yeah <laughs> so you have i'm sure more music coming next year but which of these songs that you were talking about is going to be the first release next year we are hopefully actually, well we don't know 100 percent yet which one okay we were in studio recording three on friday and okay. the first one we think is going to be a cover cool and uh uh, i will save what it's going to be but uh it'll be pretty cool it'll be a cover it'll be a cover for the first one uh because we want to sort of build up a lot of uh traffic to start and then uh kind of release something after that cover is doing its thing cover songs can perform really well because they can get playlisted a little bit easier yeah country covers stuff yep. like that spotify eats that up that's it we're doing yeah that, that that's essentially the kind of yeah the they eat it why. up yeah and and it, it's a little easier to drive tiktok from a social or like social media people to to a, a song cover. they already like yeah and, and uh it, neon moon exactly exactly and so um we kind of want to build a base first over on spotify and apple music before we release some of the original stuff just kind of like so that we have a, a a thing that we're sending stuff to, right? A base, you know. It's easier to establish fans of original music once they're already a fan of the singer. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, is there just going to be a couple of singles then next year? Or are you going to play the uh, play the release game slow? We have we have three, um, and it'll be in the six week intervals, and then hopefully we'll get to do a couple of there's there's a lot of songs that are being pitched right now okay um and uh we want to make sure that those have a chance to be heard right. before um we pull them and cut them because you ourselves. don't want to you don't want to cut them release them and then have somebody who's gigantic say i want that exactly one, and then have exactly. to take it all down and exactly. then all the work yeah. and the money is gone <laughs> exactly <laughs> and it's expensive you know it's expensive to do all this stuff dude no kidding yeah it's an old thing where you can have something that's good, fast, yeah. and cheap, and you yes. can only choose two yeah. of those three. Yeah. And I love thinking about that because there's so many people who just want good, cheap music. And I'm yeah. like, well, if you want that, that's fine. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. I mean, it is it is a, like to get a product that I am proud of, it does take some time. And like we have had some setbacks and blah 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 whatever but like now that we are here and have a finished product i am very excited for it. that's cool yeah so what's what's other than music what's coming from uh, the liam slater world in 2023 in 23 well we're playing the bluebird on Sweet. Uh, saturday it'll be my second time there uh we have um we're, this will have already been he will have already played by the time yeah that this by the is time out. you all hear this i will i will have already played my second time <laughs> come to his uh, next show at the bluebird <laughs> <laughs> yeah come to my next show we're gonna be doing uh some in-town shows um next year we're gonna start um branching out of nashville cool. we were doing a bunch of shows uh out in regional Georgia. tours yeah uh, so starting at the end of January, we have um, shows that we're going out to Savannah, Georgia. We're doing some in Atlanta um, and we're kind of going to. 
branch out from there. And we still have some summer dates that are open. So if any of you listeners would like to book Liam Slater and his band for Nick Rifkin, if you're listening up in uh, up in the Northeast, exactly. If you want to have Liam Slater, he slaps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're still, we're going to do a lot of touring. We're going to, um, kind of hit the ground running, uh, with this, all this, with all this music coming out and, um, it's going to be really exciting. I'm, I'm very excited to kind of make my mark now, you know, it's, you, I've been working sort of in silence, you know, in the dark for, you know, however many years I've been here and it's going to be nice to finally have some Nashville product to show it. So. I love the term working in the dark because yeah. that is a, what a lot of our stuff feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now I'm doing a lot of work in the dark and right. people are asking like, what's going on? I'm yeah. like, just work. Yeah. It's, it'll happen. Like, you know, it, it takes time. Stuff like this takes a long time. It takes a long time to build a house, but you can't build a house without a foundation. Right. Exactly. Yes. I love that. It's mm. so good. <laughs> on that note, Liam, will you tell our listeners where they can find you Absolutely. on our, our media platform? Certainly. You can find me anywhere at Liam Slater Music. L-I-A-M-S-L-A-T-E-R Music. That's actually remarkable that you got the same handle across I platforms. Try, I ha, it's I've been squatting on these handles for years. <laughs> Thank God music is going well because <laughs> <you know, like, laughs> I just have a bunch of shitty handles. You're like, well, <laughs> I don't know what to do now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't love my social media handles, but sure. I got the Aaron Shilb across everything. Yeah, like from from Venmo yeah. all the way to my Facebook. Yeah. Like, uh, well, looks like I'm sticking with this one. <laughs> and somewhere or another, I created the Aaron Shilp on TikTok. So I technically nice. own that handle, but I yeah. forgot the email oh, dear. that I used. And so I don't know how to use it. So that one's gone. <laughs> so I just have Aaron Shilb on TikTok now is where I post my stuff. But technically, I do have somewhere, the handle. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> some, some probably ghost email I created <laughs> owns that account. Uh, well, Liam, thank you for thank joining you, us today on the pod. This will be the last episode here in this studio before we Rest go to our new studio. location. We will. That's another one of the things that I can't uh, make the formal announcement for yet. But uh, you'll uh, we'll <laughs> oh, make saw, we'll make I it on that. we'll make it on air once uh, once we have yeah. our new spot. So I'll make that announcement in the the, the earlies of uh, yeah. what it shall it be January twenty twenty something like that. God, I almost said twenty twenty one. When are we? <laughs> Woo! Well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening this week's episode. You can find us on all of our social media platforms at Nashville Tour Stop. You can follow us on the web at NashvilleTourStop.com and keep up with our full events calendar. Uh, and like I said on our last episode, we do have our actual biggest announcement ever coming, which... Again, like I said, I can't talk can't about. Yet, but, but the uh, the the news will break eventually, and the news is kind of broken on the down low. But uh, we'll we'll make an announcement one of these days. So until then, check out our Patreon, subscribe to the podcast, mm -hmm. share it with your friends, and do remember that all roads lead right back here to the Nashville Tour Stop. Yeah.